we're going to take time to pray for our nation right now before I share the word. And I noticed that many of us are on vacation, and I learned that when when people go to vacation, the pastors uh, work. And uh, when the people work, the pastors also work. <laughs> Now we do take vacation, but not at the same time. <laughs> so uh, praise the Lord. Uh, would you join me to pray for our nation right now? Let's rise up. Thank you, Jesus. We humble ourselves right now before you. Oh God, you are awesome. Lord, we stand today. As our forefathers have stood before you in times gone by, celebrating our history and reveling in all the great things that the United States of America has achieved. On this day, we rejoice in favor you have graciously given us. We thank you for the blessings of life, liberty, and happiness. For this generation and for the generations to come, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for our independence, for peace, and for all those who have bravely given their lives in the defense of freedom and justice. We thank you that your gracious and provident hand has given us so much. Yet. As a nation and people, we have not always chosen the right way. We ask you to forgive us for this time. Let the healing balm of Gilead cover us on this day, O oh God. We commit ourselves to wholeheartedly honoring and serving you. With everything that we are, we lay our lives before you. Make us a generous people. Make us a holy nation, a people set aside to love you forever, for the sake of the land and land of the brave and the free and the peoples and nations of this world. Today, O oh God, we do not. Presume your grace for our country. We don't take it for granted. Our land is in need of you. Our families are in need of you. Our industries and businesses are in need of you. Our schools and governments are in need of you. Our churches are in need of you. We need you, Lord Jesus. May we look only to you. This Independence Day. One nation under God, indivisible. Holy Spirit, come now. Your glorious Holy Spirit, breathe new life to this nation. Breathe new life to your people, to us. May justice flow like rivers and righteousness like a never-failing stream. Until our country is covered with your glory, as the waters cover the sea, we ask this in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah! All God's people say, Amen. 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 Come on, give Jesus a big hand. <laughs> Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Look at you! You're obedient people. I didn't ask you to sit down, and you remain standing. <laughs> you may be seated. <laughs> As we worship the Lord, our prayer director Brigitta texts me. She got a word even as we worship God. So I want to invite her to come and share it herself, so that you can hear it firsthand. Can you give the mic to her, please? I believe the word that she got is. Very timely, even with the message that I'm going to share today. Let's give, let's give Bridget a big hand. Praise the Lord. Good mid morning, afternoon. All right, 
we're a little bit small today, um, and we've been talking about independence. And um, as we were worshiping, I was struck by there's a lot of fear and doubt in some of you. Um, so before we celebrate tomorrow as Independence Day, today we want to make sure that you, each individually, you are set free. So that what I kept hearing during the worship, which was beautifully led by our sisters, um, that we're dynamite boxes. So what I kept seeing was everywhere we go, we bring that dunamis power of God to every situation that we go to. And you may not think that you have power, but once you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you have power, no matter what. There's no junior Holy Spirit, no matter how young or how old, whether you're five or you're 75. You have the same dunamis power of the Holy Spirit within you. So what I kept seeing was just whenever an individual comes to a situation, the atmosphere changes. Yeah. It's like, I kept hearing fear and doubt, fear and doubt, fear and doubt. I think some of you are struggling with both or one. Um, so wherever you go, you're like a dynamite keg. You go in, poof, fear is obliterated. You go in, poof, doubt is no more. Amen. It's just the way it is. But we forget who we are. Wherever we go, we usher in the kingdom of God. It's just who we are. And when I work, I may not see them in person, but through telehealth, I bring the kingdom of God. And I can see the changes. You have to know who you are. You have to know that you have that dynamite power in you. Are you free? Because if you're not, you can't bring that same freedom to other people. But the Lord said, be filled with the Holy Spirit so that you can be filled with his power that wherever you go, you are the dynamite keg of God wherever you go, whether it's at work, dentist appointments, grocery stores, you are that dynamite box. Amen. Would you facilitate us in prayer now? Let's join <laughs> and uh, agree with her in prayer. Would you do that? So not only that she prays alone, but we, we, we join our hearts. Come on. You can stand up again. That's okay. You'll be sitting for a long time. Yes, All like right. I had a lot oh, of Jesus, we thank you. For those of you who have the presence of God, the power of God, I invite you to mm. speak in that heavenly language. Holy Spirit, we need you, oh God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we break every spirit of doubt right now. In the name of Jesus, oh God, that the knowing and the wisdom and the revelation of Christ be upon us right now, oh God. And Father, I cast out fear in the name of Jesus. Perfect love cast out fear in the name of Jesus. Father, cause our spirit man to rise up right now. Rise up right now. Right now, oh God, so that we are not dampened by our situation. We are not dampened by what we see or feel or what is among us. But we have the dunamis power of the Holy Spirit. And we thank you, Lord, that we are the church. We give the answer. We are the ones that will bring the kingdom of God. But start with us oh God father release your people Lord uh, every heavy chain right now is broken in Jesus name father fear and doubt be gone in the name of Jesus thank you Jesus. thank you Lord in Jesus name we pray amen 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 may be seated please thank you Bridgetta thank you Pastor Dion Holy. Praise God. <laughs> well, today we are focusing into a new topic this month. And uh, of course, you know that our theme this year, the whole year, is Rise Up and Be Radiant, taken from the book of Ephesians. And that is the call of the church. And uh, we need to understand that you are, you are bright and God wants you to be uh, to rise up and be radiant. Amen? 
And uh, this month, we are going to focus on the topic of be the church, be the church. And uh, what do you mean by be the church? You know, because some people thought that the church is a building. Church is not a building. Church is God's people, the called out one. And you are called out to be sent out. Amen? And uh, so... The title that I'm giving today is God's Design for You. God's Design for You. So it is a uh, Be the Church series. God's Design for You. So God has special design for every one of you individually and also as a family. And God also have a design, a special design. He is the great architect. He designed us as a church. It is a special design and you are, you are precious. You are special. You are loved. You are smart. God gives you certain skill, certain gift and, uh, that nobody else has. And uh, God has special calling for you. So God has designed. He designed you special. And I remember many years ago, I, I heard a story. I think well, maybe I also shared this story um, maybe 10 years ago. There was this farmer, and he found a little eaglet. And uh, because uh, it was by itself, so he grew that eaglet. Eaglets is the uh, small eagle, okay? And uh, so, <laughs> not eaglo, okay? Uh, it's eaglets. So, uh, the farmer has many chickens, so he grew the uh, eaglets with the chicken. And, of course, the, uh, they grew up together, and the eaglets hang out with the chicken, and the chicken always uh, look for what? for worms, for something, you know, on the floor. You know, it's just like chicken, chicken, chicken. So a month, uh, two months, several months went by. And then at one point, you know, as the eagles grew up, at one point uh, he saw this uh, eagles up high on the sky soaring. And uh, he thought to himself, perhaps, you know, it's just like, wow. Ah, they look like me, or I look like them, you know. So why am I doing here? Why uh, uh, can I fly like like that? You know. So it's um, so the eaglets begin to try to fly, you know, little by little, you know, and uh, slowly, and then within just several days later, you know, the eaglets fly, soar to the sky. Up with the eagle. That is God's design for the eagle. Eagles are not meant to grow up like chicken. And one of the um, special things about eagles is when eagles are attacked by other kind of birds, usually eagle would defend himself by flying higher. Flying higher, higher and higher. And eagle has special eyes special eyes that other birds don't have. And it can uh, stand the, uh, the, the, the sun uh, like, like no other birds. So he would fly closer, soaring to the sky, closer to the sun. And I believe we as God's people, you as God's people, God has a special, God has designed you special. You are designed special. You are not only to look at the uh, earthly matters that cause you to be offended easily, to, to have anger, to have bitterness, and to, you, 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 talk, you focus on the earthly thing. The book of Colossians says that uh, focus on the things above. Focus on the things above. And you, when you have problems, when you have challenges, when you have situations, what you need to do is don't look at the bottom. Look up. Look up to God. You are, you are powerful. You are like a dynamite. You are uh, like a dynamo that can energize power. And when you face problem, you need to go up 
closer to the sun. Not S-U-N, but S-O-N. Close to the sun. Amen? Because you are eagles. I remember several years ago, maybe last year. Was that last year? Sean found a, uh, a little owl here in our facility. And I, I just uh, I heard from them that apparently it is not the first time that uh, owl, you know, they, they found owl. Marcus, you, you found owl on the foyer, right? And uh, so, so uh, Sean t- tried to, and others tried to take care of that, that little owl. And um, they fit this, this little owl well, you know. But, you know, how many of you know that owl is not a pet? <laughs> it's not a pet. And no matter how good you, you fit the owl, you know, it doesn't grow as, as, as it should. And after some time, you know, uh, the bones become weak. This is what uh, um, Fang uh, explained to me, the, the, the bones become weak and crooked and finally died. And oh, so, uh, but try to release the, the, the owl, but it's too late. But uh, so why? Because owl is not a pet. It's not designed to be a pet. Even though we, we, we meant for good, but it's not designed for that. So God has called each one of you with a special design. He is the great architect. He built you. He built you so well. He designed you so well that you can take the challenges, anything that you will face. So before life put something on you, God has put something in you because he is the great architect. So I have two points today. And the first one is God's design and purpose. God's design and purpose. You need to understand that this verse, perhaps you have heard this many times. Matthew chapter 16, verse 18, and I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Jesus said, I will build my church, and all the powers of hell will not conquer it. And the powers of hell will not conquer it. Other translation, it says, and the gates, can you, say, can you say gates? It's not only singular, it is plural. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. In this, in this translation, it, it says, and all the powers of hell will not conquer it. So I want you to know that hell have power. I want you to know that there, there are gates and when it says, I will build my church and all the powers of hell and all the gates of hell shall not prevail against it, that shows that the church is not passive. The church is active and even proactive. At least it is what we are designed for. You need to know that this is your design as you have received Jesus as Lord and Savior, not only as Savior, but as Lord. He is our Lord, our Master, our King. And you need to understand that you have this assignment. You are designed for a purpose. And with that, you need to understand that the word church in the original language, in Greek, it means ecclesia. Ecclesia is the called out ones. People that are called out, people that are selected, and not only called out, but sent out. And we are building this, this, this momentum, this series, even from the previous months. And you need to understand so that you know that actually you are designed this way. And after you read this verse... You need to understand that even from the very first time Jesus launched the church, from the very first time Jesus launched his movement, he launched it in front of the gates of hell. This is the first time Jesus mentioned about the church. And he declared it in front of the gates of hell. So you need to understand that Jesus is confrontational toward the powers of darkness. 
and he thrust his church into the midst of a battle. There is battle, there is war. And we see that his initial functional use of the term that Jesus said is church, ecclesia. And in another translation, I mentioned that the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Gates, plural. It's not only one, gates. And gates were the defensive and political structure in the ancient world. Jesus was saying the nature of his church had to do with attacking and undermining the ideologies and dark forces that granted earthly empires their political, economic, and spiritual influence. You need to understand before I continue. The enemy is not flesh and blood. The battle, the powers of darkness that we are facing is not people with other belief, different religion. No. Paul the Apostle mentioned clearly that we are not fighting against flesh and blood. But against what? Against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness. And that is what we are fighting for, fighting at. And that is the call of the church. But Jesus, not only that he designed us in such a way, he gave us the power of the Holy Spirit to do it. That's why Pastor Dion last week mentioned about the Holy Spirit. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. So not only that He sent you, He sent you to go and make, make disciples of all nations. No, He empowers you. So we have no more excuse. Tell your neighbor, I have no more excuse. No more excuse. Say it with confidence. Now you, you, you turn it around. You have no more excuse. No more excuse. <laughs> so we need to go. We need to go and make disciples of all nations. And, you know, talking about spiritual warfare in the announcement, Video announcement just now, you watch that we, we uh, announced the uh, Wagner University. I want to announce to you that we are in the process of having Wagner University in our campus. Praise the Lord. Yeah. And what does it mean? That means we want to equip you more. We want to build you. And... Uh, it is not a coincidence, some 20 plus years ago, my mentor, my professor at the time uh, at, the, at, at a Fuller uh, Seminary in uh, Pasadena, um, some 20 plus years ago, he appointed me to start, at the time the name was Wagner Leadership Institute, and he appointed me as the Chancellor of Wagner Leadership Institute in Indonesia. And I worked together with my friend, Pastor Kong, he is the Vice Chancellor, and we started the, uh, uh, the, 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 the uh, Wagner Leadership Institute in a successful way. And people in Indonesia, they were, they were equipped, many leaders, many, many churches joined from, from different uh, churches, they joined us. And not only that, <laughs> Well, within just a short period of time, it grew to Singapore because people in Singapore, they, they heard about this and, hey, why don't you open in Singapore? And then people in Malaysia heard about this and, why only in Indonesia and Singapore? How about Malaysia? And so I, I, I talked to my uh, mentor, you know, Peter. Uh, it, it grows so fast. Well, it's okay, Paul. It's okay. Just keep on growing. And then uh, it grows to, to the Philippines. And, uh, and then it grows to Australia. But I called Peter again. Peter, Australia is not Asia. <laughs> and uh, well, it's okay when, because there's so much demand. Think about that. So much de demand. And after, I, I forgot, probably about three, four, five years, uh, I, I got a call from Peter Wagner, he said, Paul, there is a request. Um, are you open to, to expand to China? I said, Peter, China? Well, it's only one billion plus more. <laughs> I said, 
And I'll introduce you to this apostle, and his name is David Wang, and uh, he's a nice man, and uh, so you will be his chancellor. I said, Peter, Peter, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> this apostle from China, I need to learn from him, not the other way around. So long story short, well, you need to understand the reason I said that. I didn't say that just to, just to uh, pretend to be humble. Many pastors, if not all of the pastors, especially the apostles in China, usually they have been in prison for uh, at least once. Some, some of them, they were, they were in prison uh, twice. And when I said one or twice, it's not one or two days, sometimes three years, sometimes more. So, oh, so I told Peter, I said, uh, uh, you said, no, 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 I'll introduce you to David Wang. So I, he introduced me to David Wang, and uh, he's so humble. I said the same thing, David, I need to learn from you. No, 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 we need to learn. It's okay. And uh, long story short, the Wagner Leadership Institute from Indonesia, Singapore, Malaysia, Philippines, uh, Australia, and China. It was over. Yeah, praise the Lord. Um, I believe it goes full circle that now Dr. C. Peter Wagner went home to be with the Lord several years ago and he appointed uh, Pastor Che An to be the international chancellor. So as we talk, you know, and I said, why don't you have uh, Wagner University in, in your campus? I said, uh, we, we prayed, we talk about it, and yes, we are going to have that. So it's in the progress, it's in the process, praise the Lord. And uh, <laughs> that's why in the announcement, we are going to um, launch this, this uh, talking about spiritual warfare, talking about the powers of hell. So on July 23rd, on Saturday from 10 to 2, we are going to have a class, and this is free. And, uh, but the, uh, if you join Wagner University, there is tuition that you need to pay. But this time, Dr. Rob Covell is going to teach us, he's going to equip us. And the title is Spiritual Warfare. And I want you to register, I want you to come, because the warfare is very real. The warfare is there. And uh, many times we don't realize and... Uh, I, I, I believe that God has uh, waken up, w has waken up the church so that we can be, we can rise up and be radiant. Amen. Yeah. So I want you to to register. Now let's look at the book of Ephesians. The book of Ephesians, chapter three, verse eight to ten. I mean eleven. This is what Paul the apostle said. Though I am the least. Deserving of all God's people, he graciously gave me the privilege of telling the Gentiles about the endless treasures available to them in Christ. Keep in mind that Paul was a Jew, but the message of the gospel is not for one particular people group or nation, it's for everybody. And then verse 9, it says, I was chosen to explain to everyone this mysterious plan that God, the creator of all things, had kept secret from the beginning. Have kept secret from the beginning. Can you say secret? secret. I want you to know that when God keeps secret, He doesn't keep secret from you. Actually, He keeps secret for you. Why? Because it is so precious People may not understand because uh, if, you, if, you do, if you are not open to the message of the gospel, you will not be able to see it. You will not be able to understand it. That's why Paul, in the book of Ephesians, he says that, you, that the eyes of your understanding might be enlightened. So you need to hear what is the, the secret is hidden for you. The secret is hidden specially at this very hour. God has a great plan for every one of you so that you need to understand. Verse 10. God's purpose in all this 
Can you say God's purpose? So God has a purpose. Not only he has a design, but he has a purpose. God's purpose in all this was to use the what? Oh, the church. To use the church to display his wisdom in its rich variety to all the unseen rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was his eternal plan, which he carried out through, through Christ Jesus, our Lord. So God has, God has this design and plan and purpose, and it doesn't change. Even when you read the book of Genesis, God chose Abraham. And he said, I will make you great. I will make your name great. And I will bless you. And through you, all nations on the earth shall be blessed. Those who bless you will be blessed. Those who curse you will be cursed. Well, that is a powerful statement. I believe not too many people dare to curse Abraham. I will make you a great nation. Abraham, at the time, he didn't even have a son. That was in the book of Genesis. But if you read in the book of Revelation, John got a vision. And in the vision, he saw people from every nation, from every tribes, from every tongue, from every languages were there. Come on now. It's not only for one Jewish people or one Jewish nation. It's for everybody. So it, 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 what God said was fulfilled. And it is still being fulfilled. You need to understand again that God is using the church. And the church is us. The church is not a building. God is using us. We have um, musical instruments, but this musical instrument cannot share the gospel. Thank God we have a good screen, LED screen, but the screen cannot preach. But you can. And this is God's design for you. But we need to understand also that many people are busy doing church instead of being the church. In a book, Simple Church, these two guys wrote this book, Tom and Eric. Many people are busy doing church. Busy doing church, doing this, doing that. And a program um, is good. Event is good. But we need to understand why we have program, why we have events. You need to understand why we have training. You need to understand also and catch the vision, catch the vision. I said it several months ago that many people, many people, they backslide, meaning they are not on fire anymore. They used to be on fire, but many people, they are not on fire anymore, not because they don't go to church enough but because they are bored when they leave Sunday service. They are bored. They don't know what to do. Let's look at the several points that I want to share to you about the contrast between the church, which is Ecclesia, and the modern-day congregation assembly. But before that, talking about warfare, I got a quote. Uh, well, I read this book, Bishop Bud Pierce, my spiritual father, shared about this last, uh, last week. And uh, he met this gentleman in Nigeria. He was in Nigeria several months ago, and he met this gentleman. He is a special IT guy. He's smart, 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 and he built a church. In Nigeria, 24-story building, oh, well, that's huge, you know, and I think m maybe more. Um, and uh, this guy, his name is Femi Reese, 
he wrote a book. It's not on the market yet, but I get a, uh, a teaser, and I want to share it to you. This is what he said, talking about spiritual warfare or battles. The greatest battle fought today never make the news. They are neither fought with boots on the ground nor jets in the sky. Yet the casualties far exceed all the combat ever fought with missiles and tanks. These battles happen in cyberspace. The assault weapons are technologies and tools that fit into the pockets of anyone who cares to bear them. The ammos are software and apps that can be downloaded in seconds with just a click and the victims are the very users who own them but are yet to realize that they are fully at war. In the midst of such intense warfare with weapons of mass destruction, majority of Christians have taken the worst battle position possible. What is that? Naive, unarmed, and online. And as a result, we have become one of the most badly hit on the battlefield. What we saw in movies many years ago, Star Trek, Star Wars, it is real now. So, this is the reason why Jesus, some 2,000 plus years ago, he established the church. That is God's design for you. You are not weak. You are powerful. You have the Holy Spirit. How can you live a holy life? You can't without the Holy Spirit. That's why... God sent the Holy Spirit. How can you overcome the challenges? It's overwhelming. He gave you the Holy Spirit. So, talking about um, go and make disciples, Jesus not only gave us the assignment, but He goes with us. He goes with you. He is with us. He is in us. Hallelujah. So, Point number two, again, contrast between Ecclesia and modern-day congregation assembly. Again, I mentioned to you about the Ecclesia. Ecclesia is the original design. The church is the original design. And uh, let me show you. And uh, I got this bullet points from Bishop Bud Pierce's friend. I knew him probably about 10, 15 years ago. His name is Bishop uh, Joseph Matera. He pastored a dynamic church in New York. And uh, I want to share these bullet points to you. Okay, the first one, the Ecclesia. What is the contrast between Ecclesia and the modern-day um, congregation assembly? Ecclesia challenges the status quo. You should challenge the status quo, not only business as usual. You are designed to bring impact. You are designed to be proactive. You are designed to to uh, damage the kingdom of darkness. And God has empowered you. You have this assignment. And the congregation assembles to find peace in the midst of the cultural environment. So many modern-day congregations just only, oh, as long as we have peace, we get along uh, just just don't, don't use that uh, offensive word. Okay, uh, abortion. What? Uh, abortion? Uh, you, you're against abortion? Uh, we just follow along? No. What does the Bible say? How about same-sex marriage? The Bible said that marriage is between a man and a woman. This is what the Bible say. And we we. Sometimes we are too afraid to speak the truth in love. We need to speak the truth in love. Hello? 
We cannot just keep quiet and uh, as long as you are happy, I am happy. Uh, we, no, 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 no. That is not the church. You look at the church in the, in the 2,000 years ago. How does the church look 2,000 years ago? They are so powerful. They are so committed. They are so on fire. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. They engaged in the apostles' doctrine and teaching, and they, they share the gospel. They do signs and wonders and miracles. And people, you know, people would receive Jesus just uh, at one time when, pe- when, when Peter preached, 3,000 people received Jesus, and more people, more people, and it becomes multitude. Come on now. That is the condition of the ecclesia at the time. And people are so afraid. They, they are afraid of this apostle. Even though the apostle, they do good things. Why they were so afraid? Because there was this couple, begin with the husband. The husband lied to Peter. And his name is Ananias. And he... Peter said, you don't lie to me, you lie to the Holy Spirit. And he dropped dead. And his wife, Ananias, uh, Ananias and uh, Sapphira, yes. Um, she came, she didn't know what happened, and she also lied. Lied to Peter, and Peter said, well, uh, the people that just carry your, 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 your husband's body, they, they, they just... They were here. Now you lie, you agree with your husband, you lie, and she dropped that. <laughs> Think about that. I don't know if that happened in the church. I don't know what would happen if that happened here. You go to church, yeah, you see your friend, yeah, he was there. <laughs> but uh, where was he? Don't know, I heard that he dropped that. Why? Because he lie, Ooh, don't get, don't go to that church. <laughs> Serious. The church, the ecclesia, was like that. But you need to understand that we are not against flesh and blood. We are not fighting against flesh and blood. Oh Jesus, Jesus. Talking about lie. Do you know that many people now, especially nowadays, it is easy for people to believe in lies than the truth. The spirit of deception is going rampant right now. Deception, deception, deception. So be careful with what you watch online. You have to have filter. What is the filter? The Word of God. What is the filter? The Word of God. What is the filter? The Holy Spirit, prayer, discernment. Ecclesia. Ecclesia demands a commitment that involves the vocational calling of all its members to represent the kingdom of God in all of life. Whatever vocation, whatever you do, you know, you are... Ecclesia demands commitment. If you read the apostles, they, 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 they were business people, most of them, if not all of them. They were fishermen. And uh, Luke was a physician, was a doctor. And Matthew was a CPA. Yeah, tax collector, right? You must understand tax. <laughs> and uh, but they are they all engage in the kingdom and commitment. Commitment is uh, I do need to elaborate, but you all know that um, the word commitment is a rare commodity right now. Lack of commitment, lack of commitment in uh, church, in marriage, in friendship, in uh, in business, in work. Ecclesia demands a commitment that involves the vocational calling of all its members to represent. You, are, you not only represent City Blessing, you are not representing me. You are representing the King of Kings. His name is Jesus. Amen. Oh, Lord God. 
How about congregation? Congregation demands a commitment that involves Sunday ministry and church programs only. Okay, be involved in this, be involved in that. It is good, it is all good. I want you to be committed. I, want, I, want, I call you to be committed and, and do the work of the ministry. But that is not it. And yet, many people are still not committed into the work of ministry. Is that you, perhaps? Would it be a good time for you to open yourself to say, Holy Spirit, I, I, I don't want to be a spectator here. I want to be useful. Ecclesia trains people for all of life, all aspects of life, all walks of life. And congregation trains people only for church life. Another contrast. Ecclesia affects change in the surrounding community. How about congregation? And if you read in the book of Hebrew 10.25, uh, that we are not supposed to forsake the assembling together, the gathering together. That is only to gather together. But Ecclesia is not only to gather. We have a mission. We are not only to get together. We have a mission. We have a mission. And uh, congregation only affects change in individual's life. That is congregation. Okay. Um, as long as you feel good, it's okay. Come again next week. Okay. I, I would say that from time to time. But our assignment is not becoming a weekly Christian. We are supposed to be the follower of Jesus. Can I continue? Yes. You still breathing? Yes. <laughs> praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, praise the Lord. Where am I? Okay. The next one, Ecclesia. Ecclesia sends out people to serve their communities. Well, modern-day congregation calls their communities to attend their Sunday worship experiences. Oh, I felt good today. Uh, and then you go to meet your friends, and then they come, come, come to, to our church. Oh, and, uh, oh, it's so good. The music is good, and people are friendly. And uh, come, come, and, and, and join us. That's, that's good, but that is only one-sided. Ecclesia is different. Ecclesia sends out people to serve in communities. Go out. Go out. You go out. You preach. You share. You talk. You pray. Heal the sick. Cast out demons. Ah! Is that real? Yes! Talking about the powers of darkness, the powers of hell, you have the power to cast out demons. How do you know that? Well, probably one of these days God will send you or your friend or somebody that were demonized and you have no choice and you have to take action. <sighs> that will wake you up. And then you will remember what, what, what pastor was saying was true. I didn't say Jesus said Go, go, send people, oh yeah, go. But the modern day congregation, ah, just come, come to our church. I'll introduce you to the carousel leaders. And uh, perhaps he or she will pray for you. I'll introduce you to the pastors. But me, no, 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 I, I, I'm just a regular Christian. I'm just a common Christian. Uh, no, no. Uh, to go and share the gospel, oh, I, I can. That's why we have foundational class. You are being equipped. Now, after you, you are equipped, what are you going to do if you are equipped and do nothing? Do it.
it. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Okay, okay, okay. Take a deep breath. Hallelujah. I remember talking about serving communities uh, in the past six years before we had COVID. We had uh, lights on Miracle Hill, and some of you come here because of that, right? I heard when I talked to some of you, oh, I went to lights on Miracle Hill. Do you know that, that talking about, about the, 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 uh, we impacting the communities, our young people, I mean as young as 8, 9, 10, 11 years old, they were the programmers. Some of them are here. And uh, uh, I cannot see behind the... the, the the computer, oh no, don't hide, please. <laughs> I was trying to, to see and that, oh. <laughs> yeah, Clarissa and uh, uh, Ashley and Audrey and uh, I know they were not there, but I'm just naming names. And uh, literally, they were involved. And uh, Caitlin and uh, even Casey, yeah? And other young people, yeah, they, they were what they, they're, uh, young age, and uh, pretty soon uh, Clarissa is going to go to UC Berkeley. Oops. And uh, sister, sister is going to go to UCLA. And uh, wow, yes. And here I am. I was kicked out from college. Uh, uh, let's go, not go there. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord! So you can become a blessing. And not to mention many other people, you know, but this is the church. The church, the ecclesia, we go out. And if you notice, uh, uh, in the lobby, there are some uh, certificates of appreciation, uh, certificates of recognition. And uh, from the LA County Supervisor, from Assemblyman, from Congress, from Mayor, Mayor of Walnut, Mayor of West Covina, and it is directed to me, but I want you to know, it is not me, it is us. The body. That's a good amen, thank you. All right, let's move on. Oh, time flies, my goodness. I don't mind to continue next week. Praise the Lord. Okay, next one. Ecclesia. Ecclesia. Ecclesia only satisfied with bringing the kingdom of God on earth. While the uh, congregation satisfied if their members have joy in their hearts. You have joy in, the heart, in your heart today. You are blessed today. You look happy. Uh, I see your smile. Uh, I see that you have peace. Okay, God bless you. Hallelujah. <laughs> see you next week. Uh, that's okay, but that's not it. Yeah. You have a mission. Amen. You are designed as a church. Yeah. And you should not be satisfied if you don't bring the kingdom in your community, in your life. Oh, Jesus. Ecclesia expands kingdom influence by converting people to be Christ-following disciples. Not only Christians, but, uh, well, let me explain. S sometimes when you say, uh, so when you heard somebody say, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian, sometimes it doesn't mean anything. Sometimes only uh, I'm a re religious person. But if you are a follower of Christ, it is a big difference. Well, the Bible mentioned, we touched it about, we touched about this some, some weeks ago, or maybe Pastor Dion preached about this. Uh, you will receive the Holy Spirit when the, you need to wait in Jerusalem, and uh, the Holy Spirit will, will come upon you, and when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you will become my witness, my witnesses from Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the world. Okay, you will become my witness. Can you say my witness? My witness. Can you say my witness? my witness? That means you need to, you need, your life needs to become witness. Some people, they are witnessing, but their life is not a witness. 
That's why some people said, oh, oh okay, so and so, they share the gospel to me. But no, 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 I, I don't want to become like them. If Christianity is like that, no, no. But that word witness is, in the original language, means marturia. It means martyr, meaning you become a witness even if you have to die. That's why in the book of Revelation I shared about this several weeks ago, you can defeat the dragon, you can defeat the old serpent, you can defeat Satan by the blood of the Lamb, by the words of your testimonies, and by not loving your life even unto death. So you, you, you are not afraid to die for Jesus. You become a dangerous person if, you, uh, if death cannot scare you. You will become a dangerous person for the kingdom of God. Thank you, Jesus. Well, congregation only appeals to the felt need of the people, so they will continually depend on a 90-minute Sunday worship experience to feel good about themselves. Okay. 90 minutes sometimes. Well, usually I pace a little bit longer. But you need to understand the point. Don't depend only on a Sunday service. An ecclesia know they have been sanctified to serve others. While congregation, a congregation believes they are saved for the sake of sanctification. What is your unit? What is your design? Who are you designed to be? God designed you not only well when when I ask you, have you received Jesus? Yeah. You're forgiven? Yes. Oh, praise the Lord, Pastor, I'm forgiven. Yeah, you're holy? Yes. Yeah. So you are made righteous through Jesus? Yes, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Uh, so when you die, you go to heaven? Of course, that's what the Bible said, right, Pastor? Yes, yes. But uh, what are you doing now? Nothing, I'm happy, I'm saved. As long as, long as I'm saved, I, I know when I die, I go to heaven. But why are you still alive now? We are still alive. You are created to worship Him. Why is it so quiet? I, I'm not mad at you. I'm on fire. I love you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Ecclesia. The Ecclesia pre preaches Jesus rose from the dead to fulfill, to fill all things. I want you to read um, Ephesians 4 verse 10. There's a, a two, there are things that Jesus did and he, there are prophetic words that, that were fulfilled and there are also prophetic words that are still going to be fulfilled. The congregation preaches Jesus rose from the dead merely to save individuals from hell. Quickly, I have two more points, then we'll close. Musician, you can come forward if you'd like to. In other words, please do. <laughs> Ecclesia has a vision for the whole community. Congregation, the assembly, for their whole congregation only. It's good. I appreciate all of you. The congregation, yes, yes, it's good. You have joy. Praise the Lord. Yeah, I, I like that. And you will, you, you come, uh, you are being refreshed, you are being touched, but when you, you go, you have the new joy. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Nehemiah 8.10 says. And, uh, but again, the community, how about studying uh, to reach out to your friends, your family members, 
your high school friends, your business friends, your, it's just share. Share is one thing, but the other side of the coin, you need to disciple also. And then the last one, the Ecclesia aspires to influence each of the seven mountains of society. The seven mountains of society, while the congregation only aspires to function only in the mountain of religion. I will continue next week. But the seven mountains, how Jesus really wants to use us from all, every aspect of life. You are special. You are designed special. Are you with me? This building before it was built, the architect already designed that if people sit up, sitting up there in the balcony, it can hold the weight. The architect already designed this building. The great architect already designed you so you can, you can handle life. Before life put things on you, God has put it in you. Let's all stand up. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I pray right now, expecting your Holy Spirit to touch and equip us week after week, Sunday after Sunday. We have been diligently sharing and planting the seed of your word. I pray, O oh God, those who are present and those who are watching online, I pray, O oh God, that we become the church. We be the church. We are the church. Not only doing church, but we are the church. Oh Lord Jesus, I pray. I need your help, oh God. In a few minutes, we are going to go home and we are going to uh, take a, a break. Tomorrow is a special day and uh, Lord, we'll go back to work. But right now, Lord Jesus, Lord, I need, I need you to help me. Send the Holy Spirit and convict our heart, oh God, that you have chosen us, you have called us for such a time as this, not only for us to, to be safe, to enjoy ourselves and do not share the gospel to others. But right now, Lord, I pray that you burn us with the fire of the Holy Spirit. Fire of the Holy Spirit, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that we will stand up and represent you, the King of Kings. We represent you. We are ready to become your witnesses. Witnesses. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord. Holy Spirit, burn brighter within us. Lift up both of your hands. Say with me, Holy Spirit. Say it again, Holy Spirit. Here I am. Burn me with your Holy Spirit fire. Say it with confidence. Burn me with your fire. Holy Spirit. I am not the same man. Not the same woman. I am a new man in you with the fire of your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, bless your people. And I send them, I send them into the mission field. In Jesus' name, everybody said, Amen. God bless you.